So the brand new Mi Band 4 and the new Galaxy Fit both came out just a couple months ago. So they're brand new on the market today and they both claim to be the best fitness tracking watch of 2019. And honestly, they're both even more than that. They're borderline smartwatches where they give you notifications from your phone. You can see the weather on them. You can track your sleep, your heart rate, and a lot more than that. They have amazing features and amazing specs. So in this video, I'll be comparing them head to head. Guys, I wore both of these watches on my wrist for several days now. Looked like an absolute fool in public wearing this, but I did it for you guys to help you decide which one is the best one to buy. So in this video, I'll be comparing the accuracy of the heart rate tracking, the sleep tracking, the step tracking, and I'll also be diving in and showing you the difference in the features to help you decide, like I said, to help you decide which one is actually the best one for you to buy before you go out spending your money on either one of them. So I think first it's important to note the price point differences in these. So the Galaxy Fit is the more expensive of the two and it is $100. Now if you have a Samsung phone, if you use the Samsung ecosystem, this is going to be a great device for you. It's really compatible uh, and it just seamlessly syncs with your phone, no problems at all. Now the Mi Band 4 is $40, so way, way cheaper and you have to get the Mi Fit app. Now the Mi Fit app is going to be running in the background on your phone, but that is really not a problem considering you're saving you know, 60% off to get this watch with almost the same specs. So next, I really wanna talk about some of the big feature differences between these two watches. I think this is really important because some people value some features more than others and that could definitely you know, change your mind on which one to actually buy. So starting off with the Mi Band 4, some of the really cool features about this, you do have music control on here. So if your phone is plugged into a stereo, you know, whatever, some distance away, as long as you're connected by Bluetooth 5.0, so a very good, you know, a long range with that, you'll be able to control the song so you can play, pause, next song, previous song. You can also change the volume on your phone as well, which is just a really convenient thing to do. Like I said, if you're plugged into a stereo somewhere else and you're in your swimming pool or you're at a party, it doesn't matter. You can control it with your watch, just a really cool function to have. Now that's something the Galaxy Fit does not do. Also, the Mi Band has band lock. So if you take this off your wrist, it locks and you need a four digit pin to get back in. You can disable this if you don't like this feature. Personally, I've been using it anyway, just in case, you know, if anyone takes it, they're not gonna be seeing your notifications uh, or anything like that. So just a really cool feature there. And then also another one is the Alipay. If you are in China, this is going to be for you. The global version, they kind of say don't use Alipay because you're not gonna have the NFC features on there. The function is still on here, although I haven't actually tried it. Jumping over to the Galaxy Fit though, some of the features the Galaxy Fit has that the Mi Band does not have, one of them is quick replies. This is a really big one. So when you get notifications on your watch, which granted both of them get notifications, but on the Galaxy Fit you can actually have predefined quick replies. So you go in the app, you can define like 10 different replies you want, and then whenever you get a text, you don't have to take your phone out of your pocket, you don't have to sign in, you don't have anything like that, you'll just see the, you'll see the text right there, and then you do a quick reply, don't even worry about it, and it's sent automatically from your phone just by tapping it on your watch. Also, you have the calendar on here so you can go through, and actually, speaking of calendar, you just have a bunch of widgets on here. So the Galaxy Fit is really nice because you can actually change which widgets you want. So if you go through and say, you know what, I really don't care how many steps I take in a day, or maybe I don't really care what the weather is, whatever, you know, you're want, you might wanna customize the watch interface, and you can do that with the Galaxy Fit. You can go through and you know, get rid of whatever widgets you don't like, add whichever ones you do like, maybe you wanna track your caffeine, maybe you wanna track how much water you drink in a day, have a little tally counter right there, maybe you just want the weather, and like I said, the calendar is a big one, that is not on the Mi Band. So being able to adjust the widgets, one, is really cool that the Galaxy Fit does, and two, having a calendar that actually shows you, you know, all of today's events, is kind of nice to have, look at your watch in the morning and see what you have going on, uh, just to be on top of things. Uh, granted, it is a watch, so after all, having a watch to tell you the time, but also to see what's coming up later in the day, makes a lot of sense. 
So just a quick little aside, if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, but you're interested in the latest tech, please consider going down and clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss the latest tech videos. So then the big one that I think really separates the Galaxy Fit from the Mi Band is the advanced auto fitness tracking. Now essentially what that is, is just a way for it to automatically detect that you're running or walking or some kind of workout. You don't have to press any buttons. You can just you know go complete Forrest Gump mode, just start running, and the watch will detect that you're running and it'll start a workout. It'll start tracking everything. It'll be recorded on your phone. And it's just nice to have that extra feature. Like I said, if you just go complete forest scum mode and start running, nice to have that. You can also use it for cycling or walking or you know a bunch of other workouts. So jumping back over to the Mi Band, some more features that the Mi Band has that the Galaxy Fit does not have. One of them is idle alerts. So I do like the fact that you have idle alerts. Most of us work at a desk job. We sit around all day long. You probably don't realize how long you're sitting because you're working on a computer or working on whatever it is you do. So it's nice to have something on your wrist that vibrates and says, you know, hey, Mike, you might want to walk around or do something. You've been sitting for too long. Just a way to, you know, keep you a little more energized in your day, keep you moving, keep you a little bit healthier. Uh, it's just something that I found I really like on the Mi Band. Now, you don't really have that on the Galaxy Fit. So instead, maybe you'll set like a timer or a, an hourly reminder. I'm not really sure there are some workarounds there, but having it built into the Mi Band is pretty nice. You can also silence the call instead of re just rejecting the call. That's kind of nice, so it just kind of rings out and then goes to your voicemail, so people don't know you just blatantly rejected them. Not really a big deal, but I think I use that probably more than I should. <laughs> You also have an auto weight clock. Now, I kind of just made that term up, but on the Mi Band, you know how when you turn your wrist, it lights up? That's something you really don't want at night. So you can turn on night mode on either one of these so it doesn't do that, but what's nice about the Mi Band is that you can set a clock so that you say, you know, make it turn on and off when I flip my wrist up during these hours, and then during these hours, make it not do that. So automatically, every night after like 9.30 or 10.30 or whatever time you want, you can say that you know it's going into like the do not disturb the night mode, and then when you turn up your wrist, it doesn't actually light up, it doesn't blind you at night, and it won't wake you up. So back over to the Galaxy Fit, another really nice thing about that is the number of workouts you have. You have ni over 90 workouts, depending on what source you check. I've never actually gone through and counted them. If you did, comment below, I would appreciate that. But I've been told over 90 different workouts and they have some really obscure ones. As I mentioned before, in one of my other videos, you have like yachting, you have kayaking, you have uh, backpacking, all these different workouts that you know, you're not gonna have just the main six. Well, you might have you know the big ones like running, swimming, walking, whatever. You also have all of these other ones. So if you like to do different obscure workouts, then you can track them you know, just as easily on this and have them categorized in your phone differently according to the very specific workout that you are actually doing. So that was kind of long showing you all the different features that are different between these two, but I think it's important to know those. But now what I want to do is actually show you guys some testing that I have done on the heart rate sensors. So see how accurate they both are, how similar they both are as well. And then I'll show you the sleep tracking. And lastly, I'll show you the step tracking to make sure, you know, is the pedometer accurate? And of course, if you are going for a run without your phone, you want to know, you know, maybe how many steps you took just as a general reference, or maybe how many steps you took while you're walking all day long. Now granted, I will say, if you are going for a run, both of these can connect to GPS on your phone, and honestly, that's the way to do it if you're going to work out, just because a pedometer is never going to be that accurate for how many, how long you're going, just because, you know, depending on how fast you're running, your steps might be a different length. Okay, so now looking at the heart rate, You'll see you flip these up, and on the right we have the Galaxy Fit, on the left we have the Mi Band. So looking at the Mi Band first, let's go up and check out heart rate, see what I'm at right now. It says 86, and just so you know, I actually have both of these tracking real time right now. You can set the Galaxy Fit to only track, you know, every uh, 10 minutes. Oh, so look at that, they actually are both very, very similar. They're both at about 86 right now, 88. Uh, they're, you know, honestly, they're close within one or two beats per minute. I haven't really seen any major differences. And if I take my own pulse, they are, again, almost identical there as well. I'm going to test the step tracking. So looking at both watches right now, we have all threes on the Galaxy Fit. And then we have 587 for the Mi Band. I will walk 500 steps and see how well these track the 500 steps. Okay, so 500 steps. Unfortunately, we're going to be in the sunlight right here. So it looks like the screen's flashing. It's not actually doing that. That's just the camera. So it looks like on the watches, we have 
3,834 on the Galaxy Fit, and 1,086 on the Mi Band. Okay, so I'm wearing all three of these on my wrist tonight. Hopefully I don't lose all circulation to my hand. It's looking like I might. I might wake up with a numb hand, but I want to let you guys know how well these track my sleep. So wearing them side by side, hopefully we can see how different they are in the morning when I look at the apps. So the sleep tracking on these actually varied quite a bit. They both showed significantly different levels of deep sleep and awake time and actually every kind of sleep. So because they don't have any medical equipment, it's really hard to compare these two and decide which one is actually accurate. All I can tell you is that these two are different. So neither one of these unfortunately has a particularly convenient band. So when you put the Galaxy Fit on, what happens is it's very easy to put on and you set it to what you think is the right tightness. Then you have to actually feed this underneath there to the inside and adding extra material on the inside makes it tighter than you thought you were originally doing. So that does require a little bit more adjustment. So on the flip side, the Mi Band is also a little bit annoying to put on because you feed the strap through the loop and then you go to what you think is tight enough, but you have to keep that back the entire time. So what you actually have to do is take on one hand to hold that one, the little, the loop over there, and then put it on like this. It's not, it's not the most convenient to put on. They're both a little bit annoying, honestly. So to mention charging and battery, both of these have approximately the same battery life. Charging the Galaxy Fit is definitely a lot easier. It's a totally wireless charger. You just plop it right on. Once you take it off your wrist, it has a nice long wire and it charges, you know, just you plug the other end into a USB. Now the Mi Band is slightly different. You actually have to put it in this tiny cradle with a very short wire. The short wire is very annoying and to get it out, you have to kind of just like pull the whole band apart, which is not necessarily hard, but it's also a little bit inconvenient. Then you have two little nodes you line up right there and you snap it into place and then you can charge it. Again, both of them charge fairly quickly, so it's not a huge deal and you charge it once every week or every seven days. So it's not a huge drawback, but just something that you wanna be aware of. So now looking at the apps, it's important to note that you need two apps for the Galaxy Fit. So you need Galaxy Wearable and you need Samsung Health. One of them is gonna control your settings. The other one's going to control, you know, essentially showing you what your health looks like and give you all the statistics. I think it's obvious which one's which. And then the Mi Band requires only one app. That is the Mi Fit app and it has everything in there. Honestly, they're both good apps. They both have basically everything you need. I haven't seen any major differences between them. Uh, and overall, I think that they both, you know, they're both decent apps. So honestly, they're all decent apps and I haven't really seen any huge differences between them. If you're interested, I made videos on independently. I made a video about the Galaxy Fit and I made a video about the Mi Band 4. I'll link those right up there. You can watch the full reviews on them if you're interested. And again, I give you sort of a tutorial about the watch and show you more in depth on the interface uh, and, and the app as well. So check those out after this video if you're interested. Guys, I think that's all I have for you in this video. Between these two watches, let me know which one you like best. Comment down below to vote. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.